Hi everyone, welcome to Capital Conversations. We're in the studio with State Representative Alice Hausman today. Representative, thanks for joining us. It's good to be with you. It's great to have you. I'm Charlene Breiner and we are talking about the end, actually we're talking about the entire 2010 legislative session. Um, it's always interesting to see the post-game analysis, Representative, but what are your overall uh, thoughts about the legislative session? We heard so much about jobs coming in. Do you feel good about the jobs agenda that you well, it's Move interesting through. that you uh, focused on the post uh, session because you'd think that uh, since we lived through it that we wouldn't have an interest in uh, news accounts. Uh, but I have a particular interest in news accounts because it's always interesting to see what is it that the public is uh, seeing. And I confess that there are a couple of things that I'm frustrated by. Um, and one of them is uh, there's a suggestion, in fact the, the governor has scolded the legislature for not solving the deficit. But in fact, um, the only issue is that we didn't solve it the way he wanted us to solve it. In fact, for the last two years, we have passed bill after bill that balanced the budget, that solved the deficit. Uh, but in fact, uh, bill after bill was vetoed. And then the other is uh, people who suggest that there are sort of two extremes, one side that says no new taxes and the other side that doesn't want to cut at all. I have to tell you, there is a side that says no new taxes, but there is no side that doesn't cut at all. Everyone understands that our uh, situation, our economic situation is so dire that we absolutely must cut. We must cut a billion dollars. We cut last year. So no one is advocating a lack of cuts, and yet there is a perception in the public that we haven't been willing to cut at all. Well, it was an interesting uh, dynamic in the session because you came in with just under about, uh, just under a billion dollars. Uh, to balance the budget. That story changed as the session moved on and actually with just two weeks left in the session uh, you got a ruling from the Supreme Court that actually said that the governor had acted illegally. Kind of take us through how that shifted the dynamic and kind of fill people in on that story and how it impacted the session. And frankly you do almost have to go back to uh, last year because you can't disconnect this year from last year. At the end of the session uh, we passed spending bills, the budget bills, and a revenue bill. And this was in 2009. In 2009. And the governor, with a minor line item vetoes, signed the spending bills and vetoed the revenue bill. That put us out of balance. We had passed a balanced budget, but post-session, by his uh, veto of the revenue, that put us out of balance, and he opted to, quote, unallot, rather than call us back into special session. And of course, uh, we acted with that reality through most of this session until the court ruling that ruled against the unallotment. And suddenly, with weeks left at the end of the session, the, the problem we had to solve was suddenly um, much increased. And so though we were on a path to cut about a billion, uh, suddenly there was a whole um, new challenge before us. And we did it. We did it uh, in just a matter of weeks, but, um, but the court uh, ruling or the finding on allotment uh, did absolutely reshape the last few weeks of the session. Did you ever feel at any point as if there would be an opportunity to uh, get the governor to move off of his position? I know that you sent a number of balanced budgets to the governor subsequent to that court ruling. Did you ever sense well, a movement? Uh, we really believed that closing loopholes on um, foreign operating corporations was something that one could look at, that the public, I think, could understand uh, as a legitimate thing to do and that wouldn't necessarily be uh, a, a tax increase, but that's how it was perceived by the governor. Um, surcharges on hospitals, which the hospitals even preferred uh, to uh, subsequent um, uh, cuts that were discussed. Uh, numbers of directions that, um, that constituency groups in the community supported, he still rejected. Uh, the surcharge on hospitals, I think, was that final one that we really believed there was broad support for. A surcharge was easier for hospitals than a cut would have been, but that too was rejected. We're talking with State Representative Alice Hausman about the 2010 legislative session. We're talking budgets. I want to spend a little more time talking about that when we come back. And I also want to talk to you about bonding. So if you stay with us, we'll be back with you in just a few minutes.